Uh, I'm delighted to uh, invite on stage uh, Mike, Sabi, and Eduardo uh, from uh, IBM, from Oracle, and from Accenture. Uh, we're going to be talking about how RPA, cloud, and AI are coming together. Welcome, guys. Oh. And in no particular order. Yeah. Okay, so we've got the slides. There we go. Uh, this is going to be fairly sharp, fairly quick. Uh, hopefully, we'll do that for the rest of the afternoon. Um, so let's start, Sabi. Um, how do you see RPA and cloud technologies coming together? I think um, if you think about it, um, you know, cloud is becoming an important part of the strategy to solve um, an industry uh, challenge um, today, which is uh, how do we scale automation, right? Uh, but just before I go there, is everybody asking about a scaling question? The answer to that is probably no, right? Because if you think about financial services, uh, you know, we had a great uptake in banking, insurance, uh, in investment banking uh, within capital markets, but not, uh, you know, so much in comparison to assets and, assets and wealth management. It is taking up. Uh, now, what we will see is in the next about six to 12 months, uh, uh, this will become an important question for those parts of the industry as well, right? Now, uh, we all know that intelligent automation does not do well uh, when it comes to uh, uh, you know competing environment. We need a friendly environment. And when you think about scaling, immediately the, qu the point that comes to your head is uh, it's a technology problem, right? Well, it is a technology problem, but there's more to it than just the technology, right? We have uh, always maintained that uh, automation is about people, uh, and the real value of uh, automation is at the intersection of humans and machines, right? Now, all of that is great to talk about, but how do you make it happen in, a, in, a, in an enterprise? Right? And that's really where cloud comes into play because the collaborative platform, the, the tools, the frameworks which are out there uh, really can bring in people uh, into the momentum, into the journey, right? Now, all of that from an organizational capability for scale perspective, technically speaking, you know, how much with RPA specifically, how much you can go on the cloud uh, needs some careful uh, handling because at the end of the day, you are you know, automating a lot of legacy stack to it. But interestingly, if you could think about the operational benefits of uh, going into cloud, uh, there's obviously things around, uh, you know, lowering the TCO, which are fairly organic to why somebody would move on to cloud. The interesting bit there in terms of innovation is how you can spin robots as microservices. We have things that we heard, you know, early in the day, how you can go into robotics and AI as serverless architecture, right? So to, just to kind of sum that up, it, it, it essentially brings us to the point that now there need to be synergy and collaboration in terms of your modernization strategy, in terms of your technology strategy, as well as your automation strategy, all coming together yeah. to kind of you know, stitch the story around what's the enterprise you know, capability in terms of scaling uh, intelligent automation. Okay, fantastic, thank you. Um, this is not working. There we go. Um, so, Mike, um, why do you think that cloud will, will accelerate the intelligent automation? Um, well, it'd be difficult as an IBMer after the announcement this week to say that it won't, wouldn't it? <laughs> so, so, uh, so I see uh, cloud as, the, as a critical accelerator for scaling automation generally in, in three ways. So, so one, um, wh when I'm working with clients so over the last year and a half, uh, when we first engage, it's often quite time-consuming waiting for environments to be set up. So the opportunity to have um, RPA and AI solutions on cloud um, you know, with a VPN uh, connection uh, to clients' data centers allows us to move very quickly. So that's the kind of first way the connectivity to get going. And, and then kind of a, the second piece is about how we automate and how we build repeatable solutions. So the example I'd use, if you were, um, had a problem um, in your bathroom and you called a plumber, and uh, uh, they turn up with a toolbox and it's got a wrench in it. There are only so many things that the uh, plumber can actually fix. So the thing you need is, and think of RPA, UiPath being the wrench, um, the, re the reality is you need a full toolbox, right? Um, and a plumber who can use all of those tools, right? Now, where we're going, the, you know, and, and, uh, and we're launching our toolbox on the cloud uh, over the next month, is um, uh, your uh, consulting engineer to turn up um, with a full toolbox on the cloud, and they're actually able to move, um, firstly, with the kind of tools like Salonis that we've seen, the ability to mine, data, mine, mine processes and find the automation opportunities, uh, to, uh, to automate with RPA, go through to Watson Services and other AI products, and then down through uh, DataCap, uh, OCR solutions, BPM, etc. So you're really starting to look at enabling 
uh, engineers who are driving automation, both intelligent and RPA, uh, into your organization, having the tools available to them. And then, of course, if you're building and emulating your, a process on cloud, um, then you then have the choice, which is the third example, which is um, once a process has been built on cloud, um, then either that can be returned to you or actually it can be run by in, a, in a kind of future s BPO environment. So it'll, it, it'll, it'll be the basis of future BPO. Um, it'll be uh, absolutely an accelerator for building automations and uh, it'll be a, a, a you know, strong basis for identifying the opportunities to automate your processes. Great, thanks. Um, back to you, Savvy. Um, is cloud capability an essential element for effective AI integration? I'm thinking about, before, you know, just to help answer this question, think about you know, AI in its most basic <coughs> form. Uh, if you all would have gone to the textbooks and we would have seen AI could be drawn essentially as an intelligent agent, which is a, for, you know, which is a box. You've got a sensor, you've got an actuator, and you've got the environment in which this AI system you know, operates, as, as simple as that. Now it is consistently proven that RPA is a great, way, great platform or a great tooling technique for becoming an actuator, uh, a, an integrator, as well as an orchestrator, right? Now let's park this part of the answer. Let's talk about AI in general, right? So if most of the use cases that you will see in the industry, uh, if you're lucky, would be you know, handled by uh, traditional mm -hmm. uh, you know, machine learning methods, let's say SVM, uh, uh, which is your vector machines. But nine out of 10 of the use cases that we are seeing today are deep neural net uh, use cases. What that essentially means is when you're going to you know, deploy these models, you will be needing uh, GPUs. And if you're using TensorFlow, you'll be using TPUs, right? Now, what that also means is most of these models will therefore be deployed in the cloud, right? So therefore, if you were to now you know, bring the park question or the answer into the context back, you have RPA, which is the actuator, integrator, and orchestrator for AI solutions. AI solutions will nine out of 10 times, or probably 9.9 out of 10 times be deployed on the cloud because of the compute and the data uh, requirement for getting the you know, accuracy that you uh, aspire for in an enterprise solution. And when you try to put both of them together, the answer is so obvious, right? RPA products today, need to be enabled with cloud capability and integration capability. And that's really where the gut lies. Good, thank you. Um, Eduardo, um, so why is RPA relevant uh, in process automation and, uh, and integration from well, your perspective? Yeah, absolutely. So you know, in my role within the integration and a space at Oracle, uh, definitely I can relate to the automation first mindset and that was spoken this morning. And more specifically, you know, we've been using you know, specific ways for you know, being able to orchestrate you know, business processes, connecting people with systems, with the traditional you know, integration approach, right? Which is using adapters or using APIs to help you know, connect and transact against you know, those backend systems. And we see RPA as coming as a good new tool, actually revolutionizing a little bit of this space you know, as well. So just to you know, provide two quick examples you know, on the integration space, whenever we cannot talk to a transactional system via adapters or APIs, or you know, because it's legacy, because this, you know, we don't have the adapters, or because there's no API, then RPA is offering an opening door to be able to come in and transact against that application via the user interface. Right? So things that we couldn't integrate and automate in the past now are possible through the RPA technology. On the process automation space, we also see a great an opportunity because when you need people to make decisions, you can put the person to make that decision. But then there are non-value repetitive tasks which typically do not involve decisions that can be automated with robots, right? Yeah. And then help you broaden you know, the automation, be able to automate more steps, and be able to you know, streamline that process and you know, begin to end. Fantastic. Um, Mike, back to you. Okay. Um, you mentioned BPO. And the impact that, that automation and okay. AI is going to have on, on, on BPO. And what, what do you think the next impact is on next-gen BPO, okay. whatever it's going to be called? Yeah, okay. Well, let, let's, let's take an example, right? So um, I was lucky enough to um, uh, inherit an organization called Simpler, which we uh, acquired uh, about 18 months ago. Uh, and they bought uh, lean um, uh, to, to Europe and the US in the 1970s. So these guys do lean as it was originally intended. So um, we turned the, these guys from Simpler plus my automation practice on a BPO contract. 
Um, and what we were able to do by you know, eliminating waste and a massive simplification and then automation is um, take a population of 650 uh, FTEs um, down to less than 300. Wow. Right. So the, the, but the key message there was the elimination of waste and simplification delivered half of the savings yeah. and, and automation the second half. So the message there was, um, was uh, you know, eliminate waste and simplify. Otherwise, um, you, you're, uh, you're basically embalming your 20th century organization. Um, the, the other bit is really when it comes to the automation. So the, the future is smaller. And, and if I were putting a... a um, and, and this was HR finance and procurement yeah. and the applications underneath it. So if that was going out, then that's the sort of level of, um, of, uh, uh, of analysis and uh, improvement that I'd expect. Now, the other bit comes back to my toolbox. So if uh, my engineers are automating processes and they're taking them into the cloud, then you know, the next generation is going to be um, you know, uh, um, robotics as a service. It's going to be... Um, uh, providing, you know, licensing up to a level of uh, the median performance or median demand, um, and then, uh, you know, robot as a service for the spikes. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of fundamental change, I think, in the way BPO operates. Okay, thank you. Um, so back to you, Eduardo. Um, in terms of the whole digital transformation piece, how do you see or do you see RPA being an enabler, an, an accelerator for that? Yeah, so you know, as I mentioned before, you know, we've been doing things in a particular way in yeah. the past, you know, using middleware components, business process management tools, and so forth. But I think an RPA is just bringing a new component into the equation that is helping us you know, improve our end-to-end -end processes in mm -hmm. ways that you know, we couldn't in the past. Um, just to you know, give you an example, um, the ability to you know, unleash the data in multiple of these backend systems and be able to put them in the context of a process and be able to streamline that you know, in a more effective fashion, I think it's very you know, critical and, and transformative you know, for the business. Um, so we typically you know, talk about a simple recipe, right? Just one, try to digitize your business processes. Yeah. In the beginning, they may be fully you know, manual, right? But at least you, you start, you, you, you have a way of, you know, tracking it and being able to execute it in an organized and repeatable fashion end to end, then look for automation opportunities. As I mentioned before, I know things that I know you couldn't I know, transact via an adapter API, now they can be automated via robot. Look for other non-value repeatable and non-decision non steps and try to replace them with a robot as well. So I know we've been I know, simplifying how we can create this, what we call digital workforce, yeah. kind of combining people and are using and are regular and traditional integration techniques and now being able to coordinate robot execution in a particular step in the process as needed. So we truly believe that and by combining all these components in an organized fashion, then we can help you transform your business and be able to bring and uh, broader results to your organizations. Fantastic. Um, so Sabi, back to you. Um, I like this slide, by the way. Um, so how much of this in scaling automation is is it a technology issue? And um, we've heard a lot about culture today. Yeah. You know, how, how do you see it? Yeah, I think, I think it is important to un understand three things about today's technology. Um, number one, that integration between technologies is no longer a problem, thankfully. Right? Number two, technology is largely democratized. Yeah. Right? UiPath is a great example of that. Um, and number three is the barrier to entry is really, really low. Right? I can spend 10 minutes with any one of you who don't know how to write an API. And believe me, you would be able to write that API after 10 minutes. And it would be as complex as a recurrent neural net, you know, running on the cloud, um, you know, analyzing some NLP uh, data crunch, right? Believe me, it is, it, it is that simple. So therefore, when it comes to scaling automation and automation being a combination of RP and AI, I think what we are seeing, thankfully, it is not as much of a technology problem, you know, as it is of a problem where you have selected the wrong use case, you have, you know, you haven't got the data right, you haven't provisioned for the data, you, um, you know, haven't got the design principles or architectures in place, you haven't got change or business readiness in place. We are seeing that it's more, um, you know, of a combination of, you know, one or more of these than technology being a problem. Like we saw earlier, uh, even if technology is a bottleneck, 
uh, it could be sold you know, to product releases in the next, you know, the max high cycle time that we are seeing these days is about you know, three to six months, nothing more than that, right? Uh, so, so, so I think I think it is about a whole lot of um, you know uh, operational considerations and capability considerations. However, like I uh, said at the beginning, uh, you know, of this conversation, where you know, unless you have got an enterprise capability in terms of you know scaling, um, you know, your intelligent automation um, you know journey, uh, every effort of you know scaling your individual automation component uh, will be suboptimal. You know, unless you have solved it at a macro level. But if you have done so, and you have looked at the other, you know, operational and design and you know use case uh, aspects of it, I see technology being lesser of an evil or a constraint. Uh, everything else probably are, you know, more evidential of uh, you know scaling challenges. Perfect. Absolutely agree. Final question, um, and this is from Mike. Um, cloud and intelligent automation offers transformation for clients. Mm -hmm. Um, how are you thinking about it for your business? Okay, well, aside from the obvious, which is uh, healing, uh, you know, f uh, physician heal thyself. Yeah. Um, it, it's really about, uh, you know, my, my job and the job of my team is to help organizations, <coughs> large enterprises in the main, move from industry three to industry four. Mm -hmm. uh, and it strikes me that you can't transform uh, uh, to, from an industry three to industry four with an industry mindset and industry uh, change management capability. So, you know, coming back to, because I'm very consistent, my red toolbox, right? Yep. So we remember the problem in the bathroom, I don't know what it was, and we said, well, we can't have a toolbox, and, um, you know, we can't just have a wrench RPA, we need to have a full toolbox, right? So now, on cloud, I have a full toolbox, right? But if I call the plumber and five plumbers arrive because they can all, one can use a wrench, one can use a hammer, one can use a spanner, got a problem. So immediately that takes to space that actually my, uh, my team need to be skilled, uh, they need to be multi-skilled. So it's not sufficient now to train people in practices, you know, UI uh, into um, process consulting, into RPA, into AI. I need to look at the common skill sets. So it's about bringing graduates and apprentices, and I think, you know, our clients need to be thinking about this too, and, you know, training people in Blue Prism or UI Path or whatever it is, and then bringing in OCR capability, growing out what's some APIs, um, going into business process management and actually building a broad set of skills so they can look at work and recognize the automation patterns and automate it. So, you know, my challenge in transforming our business is recognizing that the old ways of working aren't right and uh, are recruiting people with this industry four mindset. Like your son who's sitting in the audience. Uh, uh, my son is uh, <laughs> starting, he's doing his UI path training now. Where is he? <laughs> so, and he's looking for a job, by the way. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much indeed. Really appreciate it. I know that's quite short, but um, thanks again. Okay, Please, thanks. for sure, your appreciation. <laughs>